Welcome to the Holocaust Memorial Day Ceremony, UK 2019. We meet today at a time of public discomfort and division, with views too often expressed angrily and without respect or nuance. Within this context, it's encouraging that thousands of people are marking Holocaust Memorial Day. In my heart and went a fire, born in fire, mine a day. Loss of home represents the loss of our safety, our personal space, our sanctuary. Today we mourn the six million Jews torn from their homes, deported, shot and murdered because they were Jews. As we honour the millions of victims of the Shoah today, we remember those families who weren't so lucky, those who never made it home, those who were brutalized and murdered, those whose lives were cut short and whose loss provides a stark and powerful legacy to us all. It all happened so fast, the ghetto, the deportation, the sealed cattle cars upon which the history of my people and the future of mankind were meant to be sacrificed. They walked side by side to the waiting truck, their heads bowed and shoulders sagging. And that was the last I saw of them. Later this year, on the 2nd of August, 2019, will mark the 75th anniversary of the liquidation of the Ziegener Lager, Gypsy Camp. They stole my name and gave me a new one. Zed, Ziegener, Gypsy, five, seven, four, two. That was my name during the Third Reich. At the age of 17 years old, I watched my own brothers being tortured, dehumanized, killed, and their body were dumped on the street. It was heartbreaking and traumatizing. Those were innocent people whose lives were taken away. I spent the rest of 100 days hiding in the bushes, hunted like an animal, walking through dead bodies, not knowing if it was day or night. At one point, I wanted to give up myself as I was excited, exhausted of hiding. On the 23rd of November, 1979, our convoy truck halted in the open field at the foot of a mountain on the other side of the border from Cambodia, sweetly known to us as Kaui Dung. We knew we had passed into safety and would be protected by the international community. During this period, we lived in a state of liminality, that twilight zone of being neither what we were nor what we would become. Lest she forget, her home had been irrevocably altered, not only by the damage of the war, but by the presence of another family uninvited guests who resented her return as she did their stay. Emital Mahmoud, known as Emmy, was born in Darfur. Her family moved to Yemen when she was a baby. She's now a poet and UNHCR goodwill ambassador. Here's an extract from her poem, Head Over Heels. I measure the distance between what I know and what is safe to say on a microphone. Do I talk about sorrow, displacement? Do I mention the violence? How there are weeks worth of fear before the camera is on? Do I talk about our bodies? 
how they are 60% water, but we still burn like driftwood? Do I tell her the men died first? Do I mention the elderly? How their walking sticks kept the flames alive? We haven't learned from the past, have we? Many of us have been watching in horror as events in Myanmar have unfolded with the Rohingya people facing desperate conditions that bear many of the characteristics of genocide. Teachers would separate us from the other kids and teach those kids. They wouldn't teach us anything. Even after school, we couldn't write our own names properly. They do not bother to teach us Muslims. A home is made of hearts and dreams. In a house you can expect to find floors, doors, windows and ceilings. In a home you will find people, thoughts and feelings. I hope you too leave today's ceremony inspired to take further action to challenge all forms of identity-based prejudice and hostility. Together, we can and we will learn from the past for a better future. Thank you.